Neonicotinoids are among the most widely used pesticides in the world. They bring in billions in profits for the companies that make them. But now, growing evidence shows that these insecticides are not only killing target pests, they are killing many beneficial species and destroying the base of the food chain. Are they the new DDT? It began with honeybees. In 2006, large numbers of worker bees began to abruptly disappear from honeybee colonies. Since then, beekeepers have been losing 30% or more of their hives annually, losses that are higher than normal. This phenomenon came to be called colony collapse disorder. Neonicotinoids are a relatively new class of insecticide coming on the scene in the 1990s. It is the fastest growing group of insecticides in the United States. They became popular because they were used as a systemic insecticide. So you could apply it to the seed and it would just be put in the ground and the plant would take it up as it grows, eventually giving the plant protection from, from pests. They're found in the leaves, the stems, the roots, and the pollen and the nectar. And nobody really thought about that weak link, which was toxic pollen, toxic nectar, and toxic for a long time in these crops. Neonicotinoids are nerve toxins affecting the nervous system of organisms. And it's not only pollinators at risk. In June 2014, the Task Force on Systemic Pesticides, an independent group of scientists from 15 nations, found that neonics and the pesticide fipronil also harm birds, amphibians, reptiles, as well as terrestrial and aquatic invertebrates. Earthworms, vital for soil productivity, are especially vulnerable. They're accumulating in the soil, they're drawn up by hedgerow plants, by trees growing in farmland and so on. And so essentially anything that's living in farmland is being slowly poisoned all the time. These are really broadly toxic to insects throughout the environment and uh, most importantly, they are readily transferred from farm fields, from your backyard, into water that goes into streams and rivers that sustains the life of many aquatic organisms. So we know that these are highly toxic to aquatic insects and that they're now routinely found throughout the United States and Europe in these aquatic systems. One of the things that we're now seeing is really some widespread resistance of pests to these chemicals. They're being used at such high levels and being used in a prophylactic manner, which means they're used regardless of whether there's pests or not. That is the perfect recipe for resistance. Unfortunately, the system is set up where these are promoted as a safety net. You know, you can use these things and then you just don't have to worry about it. And, and that's a big failing of the agricultural system how it's set up, as well as the chemical companies that are really just promoting their use. We approve chemicals really at the speed of light. They're approved really quickly because these chemical companies have a lot of money at stake. But then when we find that they are potentially problematic for human health, for the environment, for pollinators, these agencies move at a glacial pace to pull them, potentially pull them off the market. Should we be feeding this to the next generation when we don't know the real ramifications of doing that? Everybody is eating a chemical that is very closely related to nicotine when we know that nicotine is so cancer-causing. And we really have not done the long-term studies to show whether neonicotinoids are. To me, that is a, a real failing of the system as well. It's not just about bees. It's not just about the environment. It's that we're not taking care of humans.